Hi, I'm Toby from TBR Floral Design. I've been lucky enough to be been the in-house florist at Lincoln's Inn for nearly 18 years now. Kind of showing my age, but let's move right along. Anyway, today I'm gonna to be showing all of you guys at home uh, something to do for Easter, a little Easter table by buying some flowers from your local supermarket, maybe getting foliage from your garden. So I'm actually doing this uh, video from my parents' house and I'm gonna be setting up an Easter table. So what I've done today is I bought a couple of flowers from Sainsbury's and I have a couple of tea light uh, that I'm gonna use as vases, tea light candle holders, this is them here. Um, usually I have a candle inside of them, but today I've decided to use them as a vase because it's just a low uh, a luncheon that we're having. So I don't want anything too over the top. Uh, so I'm gonna be using those. I'm gonna show you more about what we're gonna do on the actual table when we get inside, uh, which is gonna be in the orangery. So I'm gonna go with the flowers now. So I just bought a wrap of flowers like these. They're not necessarily my favorite flowers, most favorite flowers but they're great for this time of the year. They're long lasting. You can make them for up to about a week to week and a half and they will last. And they come in great colors, especially for Easter. This is a croissant, they, it's a spray croissant. The yellow is very vibrant. And I'm also gonna be using today Lysianthus, which is the lovely purple. It gives you that real Easter feel. And this all comes in one wrap at, uh, at your local supermarket. So it's a good bargain for that to create a beautiful table for your family. So I'm gonna start off with this tea light and I'll show you first, as they say always, this is what I made before. So this is what we're gonna head for. We're gonna, we're gonna make four of these today, but I've already made two uh, so it doesn't take too much time. But what you do is you're gonna kind of clean the flower, the chrysanthemum a little bit Look at your level to see what length you're at. Because you don't want it to be too big. You just snip that right down, place it in, see how it is. And you can see that that's obviously a very good height. Then with the flowers that I've snipped off here, which I've already done already before we started the video, I'm just gonna tuck a few down in the bottoms there and just try to make it a 360 vase. There you go. So it's kind of, it's, all, it's working all the way around. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in my purple lizzies. I have cut them down already, but what you may wanna do is cut them down a bit more. I kind of like the little uh, whimsical bits that have come out, the other flowers. So I tend to keep them, but obviously do what you like to do. If you like it a bit more whimsical, go for a bit more whimsical, or if you want more tapered, go more tapered. Then what I do is I kind of place them in between the yellow flowers. So you're getting that like movement of purple running around because obviously what, is, what, what does Easter make you think of? Purple and yellow. So that's why I wanted to definitely go with this type of coloring and these flowers are just great to work with. So that's one that's just finished. Very quick, very simple as you can see. So I'm just gonna make the other one. I kind of prepared that already, but I just wanted to show you again. Obviously you've cut it down, goes into the vase, add your little surrounds, like so. And then you just go in with your little purple Lysianthus. I mean, to be honest, this is a great thing to do with the kids. They would love it. And, and that's what Easter's all about. It's about being with your family, being with your kids, the Easter egg hunt, all of the funness that goes with Easter. And this is a great thing to do with the kids. It's something you, we picked up at the supermarket. It was nice and easy and quick. And back in the house, grabbed a couple of vases or tea light holders, and then join in with the fun. So I've put the purple in there. It's got a nice little even of purple. I'm gonna pop that in the top because I do like it a little slightly more whimsical. <laughs> and so those are, these are those four vases that I've done. Now what I'm gonna do <coughs> with some of the remaining flowers, because I also bought some tulips, is I'm gonna make this little vase. Fish bowls you can buy pretty much anywhere. You, again, you're talking about two quid. It's, it was, it's a good price for what you get. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do it a little bit fun. You'll see what I'm gonna do with all of these vases once they get on the table. I think I may have gone a bit over the top, but as everybody in Lincoln's Inn knows, I love to do things over the top. So I'm gonna put a bit of splash of water in there. Not too much, just enough to see it just below the rocks that you have in there. You'll need some rocks in there for the reason of, with the tulips, you'll need to anchor them. 
and get them <laughs> so you can get that spiral that we're going to do with the tulip. You want to clean off some of the leaves, just like that. Cut it down slightly. And then you just feed it into the vase, preferably going against a rock. And you just kind of slide it in there very softly. It shouldn't break if you just don't be too forceful when you pop that in the vase there, because it could be uh, that it will snap, uh, especially when they're fresher. I would definitely advise making these vases probably make two, maybe a day or two before you actually want to use them on, on Easter because you want the flower to open. And also tulips grow about two inches every day. So it's really great to have this in there because the bowl will fill out, the leaves will suck up the water. So it gets bushier and it'll look, it'll look more impressive. When you first do it like this at the first time, it can be a little bit sparse. Uh, hence why I'm gonna add in some other croissants uh, that came with the package, because uh, want not, waste not, I say. So we're just gonna keep carrying on with that spiral in there. These, these tulips are generally about uh, £1.50, £2. So it's a very reasonable price and to create such a little stunning table layout we're gonna do. For me, I just throw them in there very quickly, but do be more delicate when you guys are doing it because it is a little bit tricky. I've been doing this for 20 years. We don't talk about that. Uh, so for me, it's quite a lot easier to go in there, but uh, believe it or not, I still do break stems. Um, so we're coming up to our final couple of stems here. And this is where the exciting part's gonna happen is when we lay the table. So this is my last tulip here. Again, I've gone for the purple tulip. It works really lovely. And, and the coloring with the yellows that we've got with the other vases, you know, it just all binds in together. And because I'm a believer uh, of waste not, want not, I'm using some of the other stems from the croissants just to give you a little element. I don't like all the colors really mixed together because I think it, it's a bit, uh, it doesn't really show Easter. That's why I kind of wanted to do the yellows and the purples together and make these vases just slightly different. So I'm, I've cut this stem down. I'm gonna cut it down just a little bit more because this is where I'm gonna just fill in the middle bit. I'm gonna cut that down a bit more. And this is just to fill in the middle, just to give it a little bit more life inside. And it also came with another croissant which is called Kermit. Not Kermit the Frog, but Kermit. And <laughs> what we're gonna do here is, again, just snip this down a bit, just in there. And then what we're gonna do is just tuck that into the vase with this other flower. So it just gives it a little bit of dif different uh, textures and colors just to brighten up your table. Now it's for the fun part. So you're gonna have to follow me into my parents' orange ring. So here we go. We're gonna place these on the table. I'm putting these ones right here. So I'm centering them roughly around here. There is six for, for lunch. So I'm gonna center these two here and I'm gonna pop out and just grab my other ones. And here we go with the other three that we made with the very bright, beautiful yellow purple. So that, what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna place those two on either end and one in the middle. So as you can see, you've got your flower spread. Now all these flowers were uh, bought from Sainsbury's. So you know that you can just grab these, grab a couple of packs, and then just work it with whatever vases or tea light holders you have that can hold water. <coughs> Next, I did a bit of foraging. Oh, I need my scissors. Hold on, I will be right back. So I did a bit of foraging uh, in my back garden. Now, I have to say foraging is illegal. I kept saying this and I said it at Christmas. It is illegal unless it's your own garden or property or you have permission. So what I did earlier is I actually cut some magnolia. Magnolia is beautiful and we're coming into spring. <coughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some branches just to decorate down the middle of the table. So I'm just going to cut it. And I'm gonna cut it again, because the thing that I like the best is the buds. And then what I'm gonna do is place them going around the vase. So I'm just gonna create like a little oasis 
of, of going around, very woodsy, uh, very organic, very natural. And again, all stuff that's from your garden. You only need a couple of branches. You don't need that many. And the one thing about magnolia is if you cut it from your branches of a tree, you can actually put the whole stem into water and the flowers will open. But you generally don't want to do that until the buds are a little bit bigger. And you can easily place them into a, a beautiful vase and just put the whole branch on its own, just in a vase in a corner, and you could keep it there for ooh, a good couple of weeks uh, to watch it bloom. And then when the flowers do die, you still got this very structural branch. As you can see, it's such a beautiful structural branch. So I've just got in there a bit more, a bit more branches here. And I'll probably come back to this and add a bit more to this. Because then what I'm going to do is just carry on with all the other little bits I need to do. The next thing I'm going to do, I did <coughs> cut off a bit of ivy. This was just to add a bit of green. I'm probably not going to use too much of this, so I'm just going to do some little bits where we just tuck them in on the sides. And it's just literally going in and underneath the branch just to give it a little bit of depth and a little bit, uh, you know, bringing the outside in. So I'm not going to use too many of them, but just enough to break up the display so it's not as harsh. There we go. And a little bit there. You will need to wipe down your table, obviously, before you dress it. So after we've got into this point here, what I'm going to do is start now adding candles. Now I had a, a dinner party a couple of uh, well, a couple of years ago, back when the pandemic started and we're still in lockdown. So I had a couple of candles. So I thought I'm going to use those because I had them in the house and I haven't been able to go to the actual flower market to buy things because it's been closed. So what I'm gonna do, I'm using four taper candle holders. You may have these at home. If you don't, you can easily get them from a lot of places like uh, Dunham's, uh, Ikea. They do all of these types of uh, little holders. You don't need necessarily to have this holder. So these were the candles I used for <laughs> that dinner party way back when, when we all existed and life went on. I've gone for, I, the reason I'm using these is because they're a pale blue, it's a bit sky blue, it just bring, gives you that feeling of spring, and plus I had them in my cabinet, so I thought, why not use them? I'm going to place these two just tucked in here, so you kind of got the flag in the vase in the centre. And let's have a little, get that in there. You can obviously always move branches, any of this around, to make, to make sure that you're situated in the area that you need to be in so you're not <laughs> having to push you know plates and glasses around so as you can see it's starting to form really nicely then the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to add some tea lights and these are the tea lights actually they are just the low tea lights of the taller ones that i use for the actual vases so i'm going to add some of these in there They're all coming together very nicely so these ones I'm gonna put in front of the vase so it makes it stand out more. I generally try to take most of the space in the center of the table because that's the, the space which doesn't really get used as much uh, when you're having a dinner party or family Easter lunch. And here's my last one there. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna pop the tea lights in there. There we go. Perfect. <clears throat> now, I've decided to, I'm going to lay the table now, but I decided to use some gold in there because obviously gold, we always think of Easter with all the Easter eggs wrapped up in gold. So I've gone with some gold chargers for today. Very, you can get these anywhere. You see them everywhere. Dunham's does them, Ikea does them, lots of places do. And I'm going to place one and you'll see that you may have to jiggle the table around slightly, bring stuff in slightly if need be just to get that charger in there. There we go. Obviously you don't use the charger to eat off, but it's, it's very nice and decorative. Let's just straighten that out. And we'll have one here, one on this side, one on this side, and one here. So as you can see now, you've got good nice splashes of color here. 
and, and that gold really brings out the yellow flowers, because uh, obviously, <laughs> you know, flowers don't really come in gold. So it's nice to have that sharpness of gold on the table. It makes it feel that more Easter. So I'm going to throw on some wine glasses for the adults. Generally, I like to work from the right-hand side, and also I'm quite applying water glasses on the side as well, especially for the little youngsters. There we go, coming together very nicely. It does take a while setting up a table, I'll tell you. But you can see how it's all coming together. And we've got two more glasses. There we go. And then one more. Ooh. Definitely make sure your charges are clean. I will come over and do that and we'll refresh them. Then obviously we go in with our knives and forks, which obviously everybody knows what that does. I'll place them there. And I'll place another one on the end, right here. And then what I'm gonna do is the napkins. Going for a nice daffodil napkin. I couldn't get daffodils today. I could, but they were obviously closed. Uh, they weren't open enough. So I'm just gonna place one of those on each of the charger. So it really breaks that up. You're getting that green again, and we're pulling in the green and the yellow daffodils with the <laughs> yellow croissants. So it's all tying in really nicely. Then I think we're pretty much there. You can add other little things if you like to, but I think this will just set off that little Easter luncheon. I love having candles on a table. I think it always looks lovely. And even if it's daytime, even if you're in all this glass, it still makes it feel more intimate and more welcoming. So I hope I've inspired you and I hope this Easter it will be fun and hopefully next Easter we won't be in the same situation we are as of this year. And uh, wish you all well and have a fabulous Easter.